Now, here we go. All right. Hey, 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 everyone. This is Levon Hall. Welcome back to the Roman Show to Experience Radio Show live here in the studio. My guest is here. She is a educ educator, a mother, a life coach, a public speaker, a leader for the community, and a, a great person that's been supportive of me and Pat the Greatness and my journey since we met over a year plus ago through a class um, for Focus James. So um, for those who may, may know her, but again, for those who are first time, let's welcome Miss Adrian Connors Bay. How are you today? Yes. Yes, we got Pam Ak Pam Atkins. Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mama Pam. Hey, mama Pam. All right. Yes. So, um, so first of all, how are you doing? How was your, how was your week? Um, this was a pretty um, low stress week. No, that's not true. <laughs> the beginning of the week started out just a teensy bit stressful. Um, just a teensy bit because um, at the end of the school year. You know, there may be some students who mm. don't meet the expectations, you know, and parents want to have meetings and things. And some parents were worried about, you know, if their child was going to uh, be promoted. So we had to have a couple of meetings. Um, but once we got those things settled, it was a pretty low stress week. <laughs> wow, yes. And um, uh, we got someone started here by Joy Harris Edwards. That's my triad sister. Hey. All right. <laughs> well, well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Um, I know um, I saw the video of y'all did a walkway for your students, and um, that was really cool. They had to get recognized, you know, had that moment of fame of graduating. And um, I talked about this earlier about, you know, Gave the credit to the teachers that went through this whole year teaching virtually from home and then doing hybrid and then doing both, you know. So, what was that experience like? Oh my, um, <laughs> I never thought I would be. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine the things that we did this year. I couldn't even imagine myself doing it. It was definitely um, a growing experience, not only for the students, but for the teachers as well. So, it was, it was quite a bit quite an experience. At the end of the day, I really felt like my brain was split. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to teach students in person and trying to do the um, virtual at the same time. But we got through it. Amen. And if we can get through this, we can do anything. Right. So how... How does y'all prepare for the teachers? I'm, I'm trying to get from a perspective from a teacher perspective. How does y'all prepare to do virtual? You know, what did the teachers... Uh, the, the schools are... Like, Train y'all about certain things. Do y'all get extra equipment? You know, get some of the skills because I know some of the assignments y'all be posting. But school, I was like, how did you just do this stuff? Like, oh, I'm, uh, so how how did y'all like? There were different. It's different levels of experience. Some people were already you know familiar with Zoom. Mm -hmm. Some people were already familiar with Microsoft Teams. Some people were just learning on the spot. Yeah. You know? I was kind of in the middle. I was a little bit familiar with Zoom. Um, never really. I fiddled around with Google Classroom, but literally it was on the job training. You had to, had to just jump in there and just do it. <laughs> and so we become pros at, at these things, but it was a little shaky in the beginning. Like, you know, we were learning right along with the kids. Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah, so Focus James on here as well said, um, Adrian, you are a powerful woman to stand in all that change and succeed. Thanks for all you do. That's my, my focus. That's my friend and sister. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And folks, I did mention tonight about your event tonight. So I did mention that about your event tonight. So I uh, hope you check it out from earlier. So again, I gave commends to all of you because y'all made this work for the kids, you know. Um, our kids have been going through a lot um, in terms of home and being home and then going back to school and you're doing the hybrid model, and um, I commend all the teachers and faculty that had courage to go back to school in, in the springtime, I mean, on the spring, you know, and finish the last three months for the kids and give the kids what they needed with a graduation or a move up ceremony, you know, and it helped, it helped, it helped a lot, you know, basically from getting back to a little bit of normalcy, you know, for my kids that was missing 
for over a year and a half plus, you know. And like I said, I commend you, all the teachers, the staff that did this challenge. And because I know it was, it was a long night, there was a lot of prayer, a lot of stress, and a lot of um, planning. <laughs> <Ryan. laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I want to thank you, Levon, and the people like you who filled in the gap when we weren't able to be in the school. Yeah. Because at one point, we needed to fight for a, a safe return. Uh -huh. So we thank you guys for filling in the SS Center, yeah. I mean, yeah. That, again, I'll tell you, the SS Center was not um, an easy one. I, I'll tell you, I can write a book, a documentary about what, uh, about this year is uh, what I experienced professionally and Personally, you know, and then we have me in September to I talk to June and and going through that finish line yesterday. It was so surreal. Like we we did, we had designed the the, the the center space. We saw taking it down. It looks so different. We come in, it was like, wow. Like you left. I, I, I remember when I left the center to lock up to put an alarm. I said, I left. I said, thank you, Jesus. That's all I said. When no one was there, I said, thank you, Lord, because. There was a lot of things that I endured this year and then that, you know, that I felt I would love experience ever. But, you know, I think it made me a better person, a stronger person mentally, you know. If I can give through this, I can do it, you know what I mean? So, yes. um, especially be there for our kids and deal with three kindergarten students who started school for the first time ever, you know, and help them get through this and um, help them get in there get through this and me buying materials and have them focus better and buying flash cards. I'm like, <laughs> I never thought I would do that, but I had to do it for them to have to come better, you know, and seeing this, seeing the growth, the maturity of them from December, I would say December to now, it's like 180. It's like, wow, that's committed to all the work we are staffing in and our patience with them, you know, and um, and our parents, also the parents as well, you know, trusting us and trusting you as well to put their child in a safe where poll calls were being taken place every day. We took everything seriously with COVID and um, restrictions and things like that. And wearing a mask every day and just hand sanitizer, washing your hands, using wipes and stuff, you know. So it was a lot. It was definitely a lot to deal with. But we, Anybody I, who had to work with K-2, man, y'all, you guys. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Now I just want to see how much they maintained the information we taught them and then as they go back to school in the fall, how much they've grown, how much they learned. And um a lot of parents they were fam so thankful thankful for us, you know. Um, you know, we get I gave them awards, you know, those certificates of awesomeness, you know. Um, because um one of them didn't they didn't have, one of them didn't have um move up ceremony. So they you know mm. and um we had to like Give them awards to make them feel good, you know, just make them feel that, okay, you we finished this. Even though y'all you, got on ass nerves, but you, we, you finished. So that's, that's, all, that's all managed, you know. Um, you know, And I thank my staff because they really came day in, day out, you know. Um, we took some days we needed as well, you know, um, just to be there for our kids, to go beyond the measure, helping the one-on-ones and calling the teachers, calling the parents, make sure their kids were engaged, you know, so. You know, so like, like I said, um, this, as I don't have you as my guest. Uh, it's been a long time coming. So, um, can can you tell the audience who may may not know you, who is Adrian Collins Bay? Adrian Collins Bay. First and foremost, I am the daughter of the one and only true living God, our Creator. Amen. And I am a um, also the daughter of my earthly mother, Susan. <laughs> Her only child, and I'm the mother of two beautiful, talented, intelligent young ladies. I mean, they're young women, I'm, and I'm getting through this transition right now because <laughs> they are young women, 20 and 17, 17 going on 35. <laughs> and um, I'm a teacher. I'm an educator. I've been um, working for the school district of Philadelphia for this is this was my 24th year. I thought I was only going to do it for 10 years, but I'm still here, and um, and I'm a life coach. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you about to be 25 years. <laughs> yes. I'm in the uh, one more year plan. <laughs> one more year. <yes. laughs> All right. The farewell tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what was Adrian like growing up? Okay. Growing up. Well, I'll, you know, I'll start by 
saying something that my mother told me. She said that I was um, I was pretty outgoing um, and that until I wasn't. And so there was, um, unfortunately, at a young age, I kind of started going inwards. I could attribute that to what, what she says is that, there, you know, children just can be mean. And um, I, could, I haven't done a lot of work around that, but I do remember, I had, like, I have a lazy eye, so I had to wear a patch. So it could have been something, you know, to do with that. Maybe kids made fun of me, I don't know. But I also know, I definitely know that one of the reasons why I began to, you know, go inward and just get real quiet and just kind of hide is because um, my father wasn't in my life. Mm. And I, I did some shadow work uh, in one of the programs that you and I went through together with Focus James. Yes. We did the... Um, uh, activate Your Purpose program. Weren't you in that? The Activate Your yes, Purpose Yes, the one in um, April last year, yep. And then we did the Speakers Boot Camp. Yes. So in one of them, or a combination of the work that Focus James had us doing, I had a revelation, and I realized that, wow, when I was a very young girl, I told myself that because my father wasn't in my life, that I must not be important. You know, I'm, 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 I'm unlovable, I'm not worthy, and that just began to be how I, I was experiencing life. I was navigating life through that lens. Mm -hmm. So that, unfortunately, that happened at a very young age. Um, I will say that what helped me, um, I'm going to say survive. Okay. What helped me to survive and get through. Um, so I had a public school teacher who told my mom, because I was in a public school system, who told my mom, you need to get her out of this school, it's too big, she's getting lost and swallowed up in here. My mom listened, and she put me in a small private school. It was walking distance from my home, and the principal at that school was a ballet dancer in her, in her young age, so she taught the girls ballet. So that, that brought in my love of dance, mm. and that, helped, that was an outlet for me. And then I had a substitute teacher who was just awesome. <laughs> a substitute teacher at that school, who became our long, you know, our permanent teacher, or I guess we call it that, like a long-term sub. Um, and she brought in theater and dance and choreography and making prop, props and things. And she would have dances in the class and we would do shows. And that helped me. That was like an outlet for me as well. But like I said, I just kind of went inward. I was just very quiet. But that was a way for me to express myself. And that's that. so that helped me. And um, as a teenager my mother put me in a christian high school what well, we didn't call it high school what did we call it back in the day because that school went from seventh to twelfth was that like junior high yeah junior high yeah <laughs> <laughs> so she put me in a, in a christian high school and that's where i found god mm, you know, amen and um learn you know learn about going we, it was required for us to go to church so i started going to church my aunt took me to church. I learned how to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's where I found God, fell in love with God. So those were, that's what helped me to get through. Um, just, I, but I never really dealt with, you know, dealt with it. I didn't really know what was going on. I just know I felt insecure, felt different. Right, but, yeah. You know, important. But these things just helped me to get through every day. Right, the um, church, it was a very important part, part of your life, yeah. You know, choir, singing, mm. my mom, you know, she got me a keyboard lesson. So mm. those outlets really helped me to, I'm going to say, survive. Survive that part, yeah. Um, it helped me to get through, ooh, it helped me to get through high school, oh my goodness. Mm. <laughs> but, um, and you know, little pieces of me, I guess, began to come out and shine. Right. I remember my um, senior year. I finally, well, I joined, I got the courage to join our drama club, and I was in the end of the year play, and people were like, Adrian? Like, they were just shocked, like, that's, because I, I was so quiet, mm. I didn't talk to anybody, <laughs> but yeah, they got to see a little bit of, of that shine during that. Um, what else can I say? So, um... In college, let's see. You know, I just got to know God more because it, it was a Bible college. I got to know His Word more. I got to know. God oh, what school you went to? Uh, it was formerly known as Philadelphia College of Bible. Oh, okay. Now it's Karn. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. C A I R N University. Karen Karn University. Oh, C A R N. C A I R N. 
Oh, that's a left thing, though. I know, yeah. But it, when I went there, it was Philadelphia College of Life. Mm. So, you know, that helped me also um, just, again, to survive. Survive. Um, I didn't really begin thriving, I would say, until, you know, sometime in my adulthood when I started dealing with that issue of, you know, my insecurities. Okay. And just delving into, you know, where, where, where did that come from? Um, now, I know I told you that, it's be, you know, I know that it was because I didn't have my father in my life. But I'm going to tell you, it was just recently, like I said, doing that work with Focus James and the Activate Your Purpose and, and um, speaker, the Speakers Group Camp, where we had to just kind of start thinking about our story and yeah. tell our story, where I just, I could just pop like, wow, that's where that started. Um, so, yeah. Um, all right, ask me some more questions. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was you feel anyway. I don't know where to go now. So, yeah. so, so you said you went to the Philip the University of College Bible, and then, mm -hmm. so how how did you find teaching? Oh, okay. So that just knowing how I felt growing up, I wanted to be a teacher because so I could make sure that other children didn't feel that way. Mm. I wanted them to know that they had potential. I wanted to, um, them to just, I wanted to help them to see their true potential and to, you know, access to tr their true potential. So, in a sense, my pain put me in education so I can help others. Mm. Really mm. That's kind of like, kind of like, like I don't want to go back to my story because I, like, growing up, I had a speech problem. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, like, I think I recognized it while I was in middle school. And, um, and I had, I told, I told myself I'm gonna be a sports announcer. That was my plan. I, I because I was like growing up, I watched um, I watched um, Sports Center, and there was a guy named Stuart Scott, and uh, he had a condition. Uh, he inspired me. He was one of the first black male sports announcers I saw on television. I was like, I want to be like him, and he had his own verbiage, his own way of doing it. So, at number eighth grade, um, I took um, I they put me in this group. Where eight, the middle school kids had to uh, work with your lower grade kids one day a week. So I, I was I was eighth grade. I was assigned to seventh grade, second graders. And when I came in that maybe Wednesday, I felt so much joy, so much happiness. It was like the kids they came on my speech or nothing. They didn't care. So they didn't see they didn't see my speech problem. They saw they saw Mr. Devine. Mm -hmm. And um and I had so much fun. I, I was doing hand man with them and things like that. They got to the point like they the teacher they teacher banned me from coming because that one one we they were so bad they were trying to they can't they, 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 they was early this week so Aww. and um they, I, I ended up getting a uh, outstanding service award for my for that year and also that was the first time I did my first speech at graduation because I didn't tell my mom or anyone that I was doing speech because I wanted to see I could overcome this you know and and it was definitely. Album for me because my mom didn't see the to the program Levon Howard speaking and and my speech was the biggest in middle school and I, I was in my confidence and I did my speech and my, my, I remember I came up there and the teacher was like take your time slow down I was like I felt inspired so I, I knew that I wanted to be an educator kind of like yourself take my pain to inspiring kids that the no matter what problems you have you can still be successful you can be a teacher knowing as as you don't the problems affect affect you so um so you say to your pain you become a teacher so what was your first experience of like being a teacher once you know now your your calling you know um well because honestly because i hadn't dealt with my insecurities i hadn't dealt with my pain my issue my voids it was a little it was a struggle because i was always you know wondering am i good enough you know mm. can i do this i mean i had a good rapport I was always down on myself, but I had a good rapport with my students. Um, I mean, I know people would tell me like they only care for you, <laughs> mm. but I had a good I had a good rapport, rapport with my students. I just always kept battling myself, like, am I good enough? And I had to get to the point where I where I, I addressed that, dealt with that. Right. Yeah. So, so, so as you were teaching, and like. The, 20, I'm 25 years now, then now you transition to now life coach. What made you decide, look, 
I want to do this. I want to take to try my child myself to address this life coach as specifically trauma. Okay. And in the field of education, things just started um, just like changing right before my eyes mm. with the youth. They weren't reachable and teachable anymore. Mm. And I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what it was. Right. You know, none of us knew, like, what is going on? And so sometimes when you don't know the answer to a problem, sometimes you start pointing fingers. When you when you can't handle it, you don't know how to, you know, handle something, you're, you're out of, you know, you don't have the control, you start putting pointing fingers. And so, um, I started thinking, well, maybe they just don't care about their education. Mm -hmm. Parents don't care about their education. Boy, was I wrong. Um, but I just had to, you know, I'm a problem solver. So I had to figure out, you know, what is going on? And I just got in there a little stronger with building, the, you know, relationships with the kids. And I saw that would help with the management in the classroom. Um, but they, I saw that they were also struggling. When I, when I, Built stronger relationships with my students. I, I saw that they were struggling with, you know, their self-esteem, mm. and um, you know, they were very insecure. And there were some things that would, had them stuck and holding them back. And I just couldn't get them, you know, past that that boundary, right. that mm -hmm. wall, whatever was holding them back. And um, in my journey through self self help, self care, self love. Um, I, I myself got a, uh, I, I was gifted a life coach. Mm. Um, before she was my life coach, you know, just as a friend, you know, who she sees struggling, she um, she advised me to go to this, I'm gonna call it a program right now, it's uh, Landmark, and I learned about the stories that we tell ourselves. Mm. And um, I just, I learned so much, but that kind of gave me some insight to my students and why they were stuck. Cause you know, they, whatever they're telling themselves, you know, they were stuck and they couldn't get past that. I never, like again, I didn't necessarily connect it to myself and my pain and why I was stuck at that point. But, um, you know, I still wanted to figure this out. And then more so as I'm trying to figure out what has me stuck and, and I'm gifted a life coach, which is the Focus James. Um, I started doing some things that I didn't allow myself to do before. I was, you know, too insecure, didn't have the mindset to do it, and one was to get my master's. Mm, yeah, right. And um, I wanted to be a better, I was thinking, you know, if I'm a better English and language arts teacher, then I'm, I can help these kids. So I, I originally went for um, adolescent literacy when mm. I um, did my master's. Um, but I also saw a program for trauma resilience. And that really spoke to me. So I said, I'm gonna do a dual focus. The adolescent literacy folk um, program didn't last long. I just- <laughs> Shit, like, that's too much. That was, mean that it was too much. It just wasn't- A lot, it was- For me. Right. It, it, it fit you, it fit um, you. I just couldn't do it. Now, yeah, like you said, it didn't fit me at all. But that trauma resilience, oh my goodness. And I, I've said this at least three times before, that was like a very expensive, getting my master's with that minor in trauma resilience was like a very expensive therapy session because I learned about myself, you know, my blocks, my, um, you know, what, what had me stuck, my triggers, and I learned about my students, mm -hmm. what was going on with them. So I said, um, as I, you know, I, I have, I've gone through my life coaching experience, my personal life coaching experience, I'm getting all this now, I said, I want to do this for kids, I want to be a life coach. Right. Mm -hmm. it is. You know, I want to help them take them through, through this process. Not just, um, so basically I had gone through a tra transition in my mindset as a teacher because we used to um, punish the, the problem, I guess you could say. If there was a problem and we punished them, we tried to, tried to punish it out of them. <laughs> Mm. But but we need and we we would react right. But through trauma, my training in trauma resilience, I see that we need to respond. We need to get to the root. We need to see what the you know where this problem is coming from. Not just punish and give all these consequences. We don't, that's, we don't jump on it that way. We need to see what the problem is and get to the root. Get to the root of it and find out why they acted a certain way. Exactly because it's a cry for help. And then a lot of them want to get punished and get kicked out and then get resources about. 
push them away if I stay and deal with them. Hey, what's going on? You know, so yeah, exactly. You're just pushing them out to the door. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, that's why I decided that I wanted to become a life coach because what was done for me, you know, helping me to helping me through my self care, self love, and um, finding my strength, that journey. Um, I want to do that for for the youth. I, you know, I wanted to go beyond, you know, teaching English and language arts to so get to the nitty gritty. Right. Yeah, that, that's the rather because you can that that trauma affects everything you do. Yes. Like, cause it affects your mindset too. Cause mm-hmm. you get trauma, you're stuck in trauma, and your mind's not right. You're not gonna focus on literacy or math yeah. or you can't. You're not gonna yeah. focus. You're not gonna give it the lunch, the energy, the energy that you need it for. You're not gonna do your best because you're so fixated on what's going on in your head or what's going on at home or what's going on in the community because you know how to address that problem or how to at least address it to right. the first step to address it, you know. So I think that's very, very important. Now, I want to read these comments real quick. We had, um, um let's see, Joy Harris here. Um, Pam Pam said, um, you're good for you stepping out and joining the drama club. Adrian, um, Joy said, while you received... You received so now you give what you received so good. Pam said, teaching you to mentor as a young man. Oh, that's one. Uh, oh, that's me. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, that was me. Um, Lee, Lee, Page, Lee Petty John is on here as well. Um, Pam said, um, that these stories are the prism through which we see everything. Yes. And Pam said, yes, we respond versus to react. Mm-hmm. So... Um, a lot of times we kind of respect, we kind of respond to re- of re- reacting, you know, or, or vice versa. So, um, so now, so now you are a trauma resilience life. That's right, trauma resilience life coach. As I said, that right. I said that right. Yes, trauma resilience life coach. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, have you have, since you? I'm kind of connected to what you're doing. Have you done some work with lessons, activities with the kids? This, this. Past year with this? Um, so, 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 yeah, I've just been helping them with just, just very, just some basic. Oh, like, yes. Basic yeah. practical things. Like right. Just checking in with them. Checking, with, checking in with them first thing. Like, we're not just going to jump into right. the lesson. Like, how are you doing? And well, the, I have to say the school district did a good job of, we needed this a long time ago, but they did a good job of making sure that you know, we got some more res- We had some more resources yeah, to yeah. to uh, to be, be, you know, more responsive to our kids. And we had, you know, we had to spend the first thirty minutes of each day. We call it having community circles, right? And dealing with how they're doing and dealing with what's going on, letting them talk about what's going on in the world. Mm. It was been a crazy two years. <laughs> so yeah, um, and then it when the kids said like we had like a uh, I call it a philometer. Um, if you want a lower part of the scale, it depends on what scale we use, but one of the scales, one of the first scales that we use, um, the lower part of the scale meant you weren't doing too well. Mm. Um, a scale that I was using more recently, like it had numbers that specifically identified how you might feel like you might be frustrated or sad or depressed or angry. And so I, right then and there, I would give them, you know, just some quick possible strategies that they, they could do to get to a more calm, Kind of place. A kind of place, and um, also made myself available as well. I have I have a city year partner in my classroom. Oh wow! And we just made ourselves available. You know, if you want to go with one of us to a breakout room, mm. just out. You know, we can do it. So just making ourselves available. You know, to the kids and helping them work out whatever situation they were going through. Um, so yeah. So now, do you, do you see yourself now? Have you? Do you see? I don't know if you've done this or not. Have talked to the parents of the kids about how to teach, how they can teach them how to do this, about doing a thermometer check with them at home. You know, especially now, going to the summer. You know, because you know, they had to talk to the parents about how the strategies about hey, how checking with your kids during the day because they might be going to camp or something like that or doing work ready in the summertime. Have you, have you thought about or done that talking to the parents of the strategies as well? Um, you have given me a great idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to get to that point. I mean, definitely want to get to that point. And I have to give you a shout out for giving me a, a platform to talk to some parents this year on, you know, my Mother's Day event. 
for um, another school. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. That, that, that was a great event. That was a great. Family, so more things like that are definitely needed. More opportunities like that are definitely needed. Um, I'm going to say there were a couple of parents that I was able to get to talks like that, and these were parents that I really had a relationship with, with because mm -hmm. I taught their older children. Mm. Um, so it's going to take, so not only do we need to, with your, you know, basically what you brought out just now is that not only do we need to build, take time to build these relationships with our students, we need to take time to build it with the, uh, with the families, with the parents too, so that we can have these conversations. They right, so they get, to listen and, and take the advice. So the kids can deal with the stuff, they, the, the stuff can, so the kids and the parents can deal with the stuff while it's hand at hand and right. not try, like you said, like you did. Kind of run away from it, you know, or, or like, or like survive it, and just try to stay deal with it. You know, I want them to deal with it while it's in their mindset, you know, so it won't affect them as they get older, in terms of their relationships, as they grow to adulthood, as they grow, become more wiser, they can make big decisions. Because if you don't address it, you going the decisions not going to be clear and, con and con concrete as you want them to be. So. Um, because I'm definitely trying to do that this summer because like I got I had you on last summer. I think you did um, mental health. We did uh, a couple of sessions with my kids. And um, now I'm going back to in person this summer. Um, I think I'm doing I think I'm doing middle school. So um, we're, going, I'm, we're going to definitely do some trauma resilience uh, for you know, people trying to figure out where they at, where they had space at, you know, and then figure out how to get to this point and then hopefully. Talk to the parents about, hey, this is what we this is what we doing with the kids. You know, here, can you maybe try they do some of this at home. You know, then maybe I can talk to you. Say, hey, can you do a session with these parents? Or, or blah, blah. You know, say, okay, because you get you get more thorough knowledge about what you because you're more knowledgeable than I am. So like, so because you I'm the, surprised. It's very practical. You yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so guys, I think I think it's been a lot. This almost it's been a lot, and um, plus now we have all this youth gun violence going on, and like so now we're going to the summer. So you know we trying to make sure that our youth are safe, you know, mentally and physically safe. You know, um, they have outlets out here that people can talk to and reach and be available to them to respond to what's going on. So, so you said you did say that um, you had a major announcement. Yeah. Um, so. Um, so for those who are watching, uh, I don't know. She, she, you saw a post um, that she had major announcements she wanted to share with us. So, so can you tell us what that announcement is? I sure am. I, this, is, this is going to be a little, little story. So, oh, okay, go, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Well, first of all, so as you can see, um, Levine and I, we, we, you know, we've been talking about a lot about the youth. So that's where my, my, um, my passion, my heart goes to the youth. You know, um, we also talked about parents. We talked about women. You know, I want to work with women parents as well and, and thank you Levon for giving me those platforms to do that as, you know as well and I also want to support teachers you know to get to get give them a mindset shift and get out of that old school way of um, addressing kids with you know, reacting and get into responding but also we need we need uh, some support as well we need to think you know think about self-care for ourselves and, and mental health for ourselves as well because our kids are suffering they're going through trauma, we're suffering secondhand trauma. So, you know, I wanna I wanna help everybody. <laughs> but I wanna I wanna um, give a shout out to CCC, um, which is a Christ Center coaching business program that I've been um, working with. And um, they've helped me to kind of streamline and get focused on, you know, who, who I'm gonna serve as a life coach, which is this is a part of my announcement. Um, but I want to first thank God because God has still made you know it possible for me to help youth through my through the divi I call them the divine collaborations. So one is with the great Levon Howard and Pastor Greatness. Thank you. You know we, we're collaborating, partnering, working with the youth and women. And then we have Tracy Cohen um, with She Speaks Power. Mm -hmm. And God is allowing me to empower women. You know we, together we're empowering women All right. through that. And then I want to lift up uh, or bring up Christy Thomas, a former um, colleague of mine, um, and she's going to be doing a program called Happy Teachers, and I'm going to be getting together to collaborate with that this summer. So thank God for those collaborations, 
And now, uh, let's get to my program. So you formally know my business as Free to Be the Authentic Me. And so there's been a, uh, I'll call it an evolution. There's been a birth, a birthing of a new name to my business. And Levon, I was thinking about this this morning. It's actually been nine to ten months, so it's literally been a birth. Okay? It's been a birthing process because nine to ten months ago, it was free to be the authentic guy. That's, yes! That's where I was. And I right, was right. Free. I was truly free. Yeah. But what has been birthed now is, you know, well, who are you? You know, free to be who? Mm. And mm. the new name, everybody, drum roll, is Victorious by Design with Coach Adrian. Ooh. I am Victorious by Design, and I want you know other women out there to know that they are Victorious by Design. Mm. All right, so who is this for? This program is for um, Christian and non-Christian uh, um, fatherless women ages 19 to 35, who need coaching in unlocking their authentic identity so that they can experience life from a healthy and victorious lens. Amen? Amen. Amen. So my new branding, <laughs> yeah, I told you it's a story. My new branding, <laughs> my new logo is coming soon. Oh, my. I'm going to be, you know, uh, revealing that to you all, you all in a few weeks, and um, I'm still, you know, I'm still on Facebook. You might have saw a little change. You saw yes. VBD. Yes, but we know what it meant. We were. Didn't know, you didn't know what it meant. Right. Victorious by design. I'm going to yes. spell it all out with Coach Adrian. That's how you can find me on Facebook and my personal page. Um, IG saying is going to be Victorious by Design. Mm. Well, the IG name is VBD. Yeah, that's VBD. Yep, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a website that's going to be coming out. Woo! Soon. Yes. Victorious by Design. CoachAdrian.com. Um, I will also be streaming um, to other social media um, platforms with um, TikTok and YouTube. So mm. I'm just going to be out there, out here, guys. So. Keep your uh, ear to the social media streets. Victorious by Design with Coach Adrian is out here. All right, guys? Well, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so Tracy said, Tracy Cohen's always said she loves it. All right. She yeah. loves it. And, um, um, you know, Pam, we won't preach before was what she said. And um, um, Lee, Lee said she loves it, loves it, loves it. So um, is there going to be, it's going to be a, kind of like a launch um, or connotation for women, those women, nineteen to thirty-five, or is it going to be? Are you taking clients now, or how? taking clients now? Okay. I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm going to be continuing putting content out there, posting just you know on more social media, uh, streaming to more social social media platforms, and um, if it's okay with you, I will drop my calendar link because if anybody yes who's, who's listening and you know you resonate with anything I said, if you need to. Confidently unlock your authentic identity so that you can experience complete victory. Go ahead. When I, you know, I'll drop that calendar link in, in um, the comments. You can schedule a complimentary session with me. We'll mm. see if we're a good fit and we can start that journey. Right. Yeah. And like I said, um, congratulations on that. I like that for tours by design, especially like the target age 19, um, because I feel it's perfect right out of high school. Going to college years or figuring out, figuring out who you are, you figuring out what I am here to do, what what my purpose is, and um, I feel that's great. And um, I know a couple nineteen year olds right now, a couple of kids. I uh, know, I think that we will be full support of it, Pat, the greatness, and um, me personally, we will be supporting that because we want to help so many young women and help so many young people um, get. Find out who they really are and be victorious and speak that and speak them into themselves, yeah, you know. Speak life, into it's speak, uh, yeah. speak life, that's what it is. Empowerment. Um, yeah, empowerment. Yeah, and um, like you said, we are going to collaborate on uh, Path of Greatness all for this summer. Um, right now, trying to figure out what our schedule look like in terms of us, my job, having contractors come down there and speaking to them to the sites, you know. Um, um so uh, hopefully we can. Because I want to help our youth this summer. Um, so we did an awesome job last summer with them. Through the, through the midst of the middle of the pandemic. And hopefully, like I said, we're working in the fall. 
um, working in schools again, getting in the school for parents option, you know, for single moms out there, you know, because we want to help like, the kids and the parents, you know, um, that especially we could. We take the care of the kids in the morning. We take care of the parents in the evening. <laughs> so, so um, you know, so um, kind of like reinforcing what we mean, we enforce we've been teaching them, telling them. So also, so like I said, where people um, where people can find you at for more information. I know you just. Um, I said a lot. I said, a, um, but Facebook. My Facebook page is uh, like I said, it's going to be. Um, well, you can go to my personal uh, Facebook page. That's where I'll be doing my main uh, posting, but it's going to be streaming to uh, Victorious uh, Design with Coach Adrian on my Facebook page and VVD Coach Adrian um, on IG. Uh, TikTok is going to be the same. If anybody wants to, you know, uh, I, what do you call it? Do you subscribe? Do you join? Do you follow? Do you want to follow me on TikTok? Um, it's going to be VVD Coach Adrian and then um, on YouTube is Victorious by Design with Coach Adrian. All right, all right. So, like you say, you heard it first. Um, her so her name got her business got evolution. It's called it's Bourbon. It's nine ten months. We call it now Victorious uh, Design. So, um, you know, Adrian, I'm very proud of you. Again, thank you so much for being it's sort of my life over the past year. You know, so um, with me personally, also my marriage to Fatima. Um, like she was, I want to say, Adrian was at my wedding. Um, she, I, I don't know if people who saw, who saw our wedding, uh, we had a, a live YouTube feed, and um, she was the one that commented on the feed. <laughs> so, for the, so, yeah, that was her. She did an awesome job. We had over a thousand views of the wedding. So, um, she commented into every comment on that, y'all comment on that day. So, um, she... Um, was very instrumental doing that, and um, I think you saw I think you saw my engagement too, right? So, yeah. mm -hmm. so um, Adrian, pretty much I've met so I know as much as I know Fatima. So, like, I think we I met you a couple of weeks later after Focus spoke at the um, August Cafe. So she put the, she put the class out there as a mm -hmm. for the guests, and me Fatima signed so Fatima signed up. And I saw that was right behind her, so that's how I met you. And then um, me and said we have the same passion for our youth. Yeah. And um, now, now we seen that we see we seen that worse right now. So hopefully, go fans go back to normal in the fall. We can be in schools and patting kids, and you know, um, just doing some groundbreaking work. You know, because um, because hopefully maybe like next year we can have a camp for youth for choice by the same youth camp. You know, alignment. So um, we can have for um, kids, um, for youth, and also make it like a work study program. We get kids learn about mental health, and they go to schools and camps and teach mental health workshops to young kids about mental health as a young person. So um, that's something. It's in the work. Maybe we can collab and pray about that because, um, because you know it's 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 been it's been extraordinary. It's been a lot. You know, but we made it from God's grace and mercy. So, yeah. um, so eight. So again, thank you, Adrian, for being part of our show. Um, Lord, new guests. Like I said, so support Adrian. Victorious by design. Her business name for those who want to seek um, um, guidance and um, direction into their greatest selves. Um, I believe that you are already great as it is. I just want you to go go your third and stretch yourself more, you know, and work on yourself and come back every single day because somebody I didn't need you. Somebody didn't need your gift, your story, your passion. Um, someone needs your resilience, you know, and you never know until you work on yourself. And don't one way for things that you can't avoid and just address it so it can be better for yourself and also for people who love you, support on you. So, like I said, go find Adrian. Um, like you might you might see her um, support her business. Uh, support what she's doing. Also support Focus Jam as well, who b gives a big face to Focus Jam, a focus of love, uh, what she's doing, her, her programs, and I'm um, just and then again just um just keep God first, everyone. Keep God first, you know, because God opened up doors for you. Um, parents, she's definitely happy for you. Proud side for you. Um, just again, I love the, I love the name because we all we all always victorious. Now we got to put the work in and do the work. I got to shout out my CCC fam, Pam, Lee, and yeah. Joy. Thank yeah, yeah. you. Thank you.
Yes. Thank y'all for being on. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for just supporting Adrian through this, through this, and um, exciting time. You know, um, you know. Also, congratulate Adrian. Um, uh, again, congratulate yeah, Masters. I know she didn't have a walk. Um, her actual. Oh, I, I took, I uh, yeah, 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 yeah. On right, <laughs> but she, she did the fall walk last year, but right, right. Wednesday she yeah. still walked for a Masters. You know, and um, went um for a staff and um for a Masters. So that's. A big, a big, and um, Pam says she loves you, so you know, I'm gonna say that. So, love you too, Mama Pam. yeah, <laughs> yes, um, yes, um, so again, thank you so much to be part of the show. Hopefully, we, we can hurry down again now and some updates, you know, what's going on in the terms of what your progress has been doing and um, what's, what's, what's going to do and how it impact, oh, impact so many people, especially this summertime. So, again, we try to you, you, you know someone that wants a consultation um, just to see what's it about, you know, and how, how Adrian can help you going forward. So, uh, this, that is the time, the summertime, you know, so let's work on ourselves, become better, better and greater. So, with that being said, hope enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Be safe out here. Uh, be mindful. COVID still out here. We know the mask mandate is, still, is lifted. If you still you, you, you wear a mask, that's, it's okay. That's fine. So let's be safe. Keep God first. Be grateful. Be faithful. And know that you are great and you're awesome. Thank you so much.